Welcome back to Tiny Grimes Games, and I'm here with another Star Wars Destiny video. And today, I want to talk about what is in maybe my top two favorite cards, the Data Pad. I feel like this card is way underrated. Um, I've gotten to the point where I have to justify not putting two in every single deck I build. Maybe if the deck is so aggressive that it's trying to just churn out damage right from the jump, like a Grievous deck or something, I might not put it in. Uh, but almost always I'm putting in a data pad, maybe two depending on the deck. All right, so let's talk about why is the data pad so amazing. Uh, and there's really two pieces of why this card is so great. The first one is sort of the obvious one. It's resources. Uh, in a game where you're only getting two resources a turn, any resources beyond that is amazing. Um, and there's one side that is a guaranteed resource. Uh, and then there are two sides that are plus one resources. And this is where maybe you don't play this card, right? Like if you are playing with other dice that don't have resources on them, the data pad becomes a little bit worse. But in something like a Han Ray deck, I see a lot of people who don't have data pads on there. You've got Han, he's got resources. You've got Ray, she's got resources. This is really good. It's amazing with somebody like Akbar also. Akbar, like Han, has two sides. But Akbar is not trying to do damage usually, so using him for his resources is often totally fine. Um, it's just a really great resource booster that's neutral, can be used in all factions. I really, really have a hard time getting away from this card. Now let's talk about its amazing side that people are not talking about. Everyone knows the data pad has resources. You'd have to be blind and not have a way to have access to somebody telling you what the card did to not know that it didn't have resources. But it's special is actually really great with the ruling that has come down in the rule book that essentially you can roll or you can resolve as many of a side as you want. So we're going to go here, specials. You can resolve as many specials as you want and you don't have to declare them ahead of time, right? You have to see like, I'm going to resolve these three specials and then here's the order I'm going to do them. And you just say, I'm resolving specials now. Ready? Okay, here we go. Special one, data pad. Uh, let's see. I will turn this die to its special. Notice how now it's a special and I'm resolving specials. Yeah, I'll go ahead and resolve that special next. So this is insane. <laughs> one of my favorite things to do is... Uh, to chain these specials into ridiculous blowout plays that your opponent is a little less likely to see coming. And then even if they do, what are they going to do? Let's say you want to do it to a uh, force throw. Uh, your opponent has several good cards on, several good dice on the board. You want to force throw one of them. You have your data pad. They do something. They have an action with a data pad showing a special and a force throw showing a blank. What are they going to do? Are they going to use one of their very few resources and removal cards to remove your blank force throw? Okay. I mean, maybe that ends up being the best play, but it's not the end of the world for you, right? You can always use the data pad to, to change a different die to something. Are they really going to just remove the data pad special, which really isn't doing that much? Um, and then next turn you re-roll and you hit your force throw. It basically puts them in this impossible spot knowing that you can flip the force throw and resolve it all in one action, essentially cheating the rules of the game. And you're going to see a lot of my videos talk about this. Anytime you can get around the my action, your action, you're getting a tremendous advantage. Um, and it's really difficult if you have, say, you know, a lightsaber with a special on the board and a force throw and something else. Maybe that's not even that great. Uh, but just having all those on the board and a data pad showing the special, it's so overwhelming for your opponent. They're like, well, what is he going to do? I've got four cards in my hand, so the mind probe is going to wreck me. I have this three damage die on the field. That's going to wreck me. What do I do here to get around this data pad? I don't actually know. Uh, so the data pad becomes this incredibly useful, flexible tool um, that really just allows you to trigger everything anything you want your imagination is the limit right you've got a crime lord that rolled say a two shield side which isn't bad but your opponent has to consistently sit there and go oh no he's only at three resources now but i can't let him get more resources or he just goes data pad special Boop, one of you guys is dead um it's just this really 
amazing card. I have come to love the data pad more and more and more every time I play with it. Um, much like the Sith Holocron, I have become addicted to the data pad. The data pad is awesome. I suggest you try it in your decks. And uh, especially the more specials you have in that deck, the better the data pad is. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time on Tangrams Games.